Hey friends, I just felt like um, making a quick uh, response, although not one was asked for, to uh, going Double O Cabbage's uh, John Zorn video. And also a quick uh, shout out to 24DB, Andy, hope everything's alright, haven't seen you in a while, hope you're still there, hope you can post sometime soon. Yeah, John Zorn is an, an amazing musician and uh, musical theorist. Um, his music can be uh, impenetrable uh, on the surface, but there's much to be... Um, gotten from it. I wanted to, um, I only have like three items of his on vinyl. I have more on CD, but I wanted to show the three vinyl um, items because one of them is pretty, it's pretty significant in John Zorn's um, discography. Um, as Jeff said, um, John Zorn's got a bunch of records. So I'll show the most interesting one last. The most recent John Zorn album I got was this one. I bought it at Amoeba in uh, LA. And this one is unusual, where his stuff is a lot of times blasting, bleeping, and stuff. This one is called The Dreamers. Special collection, the gentle side of John Zorn. And it really is. These are some beautiful compositions by John Zorn. I Okay, I'll open it up. Um, I've listened to it just a couple of times since I bought it, and it's just not like anything I'd ever, ever heard by John Zorn before. <coughs> I love it. I love this album. It's just very, very soft, lyrical, and beautiful. No strange, odd, all of a sudden attacks of this and that. It's just wonderful, wonderful music. Here's the insert. And I have to show it's a picture disc. It's beautiful. It's a picture disc. It plays well, too. You know that with picture discs, because of the paper, you know, there's a, you, there can be a certain amount of rumble. But um, this seems to be one of those picture discs where it was pressed really well. It's pretty darn quiet. John Zorn is amazing. Um, besides um, the music he writes, he has some interesting theories about colors and objects and the assembly of objects for the eye being melodies. I agree with it. It makes sense. He's not the only person I've heard say that. I mean, in literature, I'm sure some of you can think of reading books or descriptions where someone will describe a landscape or some flowers and they'll do it almost in musical terms like you know a, a melody of, of color or you know you know what I'm saying John Zorn took it one step further I understand by doing performances where the visual aspect was part was presented as part of the music and that the way that he did it the audience got it now Vinyl, the Vinyl Love Train um, earlier this year stopped by courtesy of Fatback Funk and Fatback Funk um, bumped up my John Zorn collection big time. He gave me this album. I wasn't, it's just amazing that you gave this to me, my, my brother. Spy vs. Spy, John Zorn playing Ornette Coleman. This is amazing. I mean, it's amazing an album, but for fun. I will go and look these records up to see what they're worth. And then sometimes I'm not looking it up for fun. I'm trying to buy something. I cannot find this album for less than $100. Wow. Fatback, you just you just laid it on me, man. Thank you, sir. So I have this um, John Zorn album. The next one is even more, is even more uh, collectible. But uh, this is great. And... Um, they capture the freneticism, if that's the right way to use the word, of Ornette Coleman's um, compositional style. There's a lot of freedom in the way that Ornette writes. Uh, harmonic. Harmoloticism is uh, um, getting in over my head. I know that he created that system of harmonics. Harmonic. These guys do it well. So... The last one I want to show, I have a little story. Um, you know, I love telling stories. So, John Zorn recorded um, some stuff early in his career with Eugene Chadbourne. Eugene Chadbourne is someone that I've met a couple times, had an opportunity to work with, but I didn't have the money. And that's the only reason why we didn't work. But when I first met Eugene Chadbourne, the amazing uh, avant guitar, avant guard guitarist. He came to Omaha with Shockabilly, and um, 
I actually uh, just wandered into the gig. I knew who they were, but with a name like Shockabilly, I was thinking, I'm not interested in this. They tore my head off, blew my mind. Um, Kramer was with them. Uh, the other cat that was with them is, is, is name worthy. They blew my mind. So after the show, I buy some stuff. But I hang out with Eugene because I'm fascinated with him. And we go outside and sit on the corner, out in full, full public, didn't give a shit, smoked a big fat joint. Was it mine? Doesn't matter. It was really good. So good I remember it. But we had a wonderful conversation about him, his music, and one of the records I bought from him. And then towards the end of the conversation, he said, hey, hey, listen, give me that. And um, I'll put my address on it. Get in touch with me. We, we should do something. And the record that I bought from him is Eugene Chadbourne and John Zorn's School. This is John Zorn's very first professional recording and his first vinyl, his first record ever. It's autographed by Eugene Chadbourne. Not only autographed, it's got Eugene's address. I don't want to, you know, I think this address is still good. I think this number is still current. I've seen him since then. This cover photograph is a photograph of one of John Zorn's melodic visual pieces. Take it in, okay? Before I decided to put this uh, talk about this, I went online to just kind of look and see how easy it is to get this. It's not easy. And I found the cheapest copy was over $100. I found a copy going for $1,000 on Discogs. And that's not even autographed. Mine is, and it's in mint condition. I have played this all the way through, but only a few times because this music is so can be so indecipherable, it can be very hard to navigate. And so you don't put this on like uh, your favorite song. You put this on when you're ready to eat. You know what I'm saying? So I had to show this, Jeff, uh, after watching your video. And uh, you know, at that time I was thinking, well, let me take another look at this John Zorn Eugene Chadbourne album because I've had it, I bought this probably shortly after it was released. Um, Sometime, let's see, when was this released? I think it's 1978. Yeah, 1978. I saw Shockabilly early 80s, early mid-80s, you know. So this was out for a while, but even then, Eugene was, was hawking his last few um, copies of this. He was very proud of it. And then the, the story inside here, the liner notes explain to you, this is indeed John Zorn's very first recording, record. It's his first record. So I wanted to share that. I wanted to share that. I'll, I'll do an add-on after some of the comments that I got on my Italian Prague. Um, um, MM360 was saying we ought to look up and see if any of those albums are originals. They, they may be worth money. I do know for a fact that quite a few of those albums are originals. I do know others are reissues. That's how I bought them. But quite a few of those albums I've had for 30 plus years. The Area, those are all originals. RT and Mess Jerry, those are originals. The PFMs, those are all originals. The Belletto di Bronzo, that's an original. I've had that forever. Um, I do have a lot of records that are worth money. I'm not focused on it. Am I insured? Do I have a specific coverage for these records? I have for over 20 years, yes. Yes, I do, I do. I will show something that is valuable in my collection that I just, while I was looking at the John Zorn, somehow I ended up looking at this. And this is the White Stripes Elephant. This is the black and white vinyl version. Uh, I guess I noticed on eBay that it was going for something like $170 by now. And it's um, one of those sellers who's 100% and they give you all the little details of how you know this is original. Look at the matrix, dot, 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 dot. So I carefully looked at the matri matrixes of these and they match. They have the round, they have the, the, the four in the circle and all that other stuff. 
So this apparently is worth money too. And um, what I'll say about that is it's going to stay worth money because I don't want to sell um, these records. I want to own these records. Someone in my family, and I've already you know, talked to my brother about this, it, it, this, if he outlasts me. It's like, man, don't play around with my records. Get paid. You know what I'm saying? I don't want to sell them. He doesn't understand it. All he can think about is money like, like most people. Yeah, I'm a dog, y'all. People that are can't see past money. He just sees money and doesn't understand why I don't sell him. He does not understand the record. This is worth more than that money. Fuck that money. If I got the money, I'd just turn around and buy something else with it. Another record. So I just wanted to add that on. Leave me comments, folks. Have a great day, evening, whatever. Probably going to get on here and bother you some more.